Delighted to say I'm joined by three-time All-Star Ken McGrath, uh, live over, over, well, not live actually, it'll be a recording by the time it goes out, but we're over Skype anyway. Ken, you're you're in at home at the moment, um, I suppose just broadly, how are you getting on at the moment? Yeah, grand, look, um, like everyone's trying to keep the kids somewhere entertained, it's a long day. Uh, the two-year-old, you'll be up at seven o'clock in the morning, so I keep him going for 12 hours, it's not easy, but we're lucky enough for we do, we're, we're in Marvel City, but we're at... Uh, we're actually 200 metres from the Greenway. So uh, the, the, the first car park, the first entry point for the Greenway is just the end of our estate. So it's it's, it's nice to really use that and, and, and get out of the building with your fresh air as well, you know. But, uh, you know, it's strange, but look, we don't, none of us know what to expect. We just have to get on with it and do what they tell us. And in all fairness, I think the government and all look to get a lot of stick over over different things. But they, they, this is un, un, unprecedented what's ever happening. And they're doing a great job, I feel, in all fairness, you know. So just to make sure we get through it and... Once no one, uh, once no one, not many people get to get things sick, we'll hopefully get through it and we we'll just try and do what they tell us, you know. Absolutely. Of course, there, there are so many real life ramifications for people. Like you, you run your business, Mean Bean Coffee, uh, it's a tough time. Of course, I want to ask you about, you know, you had that health scare in 2014, open heart surgery, and if there are any ramifications for that. So, like for an awful lot of people, it's not just simply a case of you're not working for a few weeks. You know, businesses can, can be in trouble in people's health, even if they don't. You know, you know, get affected directly by COVID nineteen, or uh, sorry, if that isn't the thing that ultimately, you know, it is going to kill some people. It's horrible to even say that, but like some people would have complications that would make things worse for them. Yeah, look, the whole thing is so strange, and and, and I suppose when it, when, it, when it started kicking off a few weeks ago, people didn't know what they expect, and we were half kind of, I won't say joking about it. Everyone in the country is the same boat, but it all kind of escalated so fast and and so quickly, especially over in China and Italy. We all start. Same, we'd have to cop on here. And I, I work with Owen's business. We've got our own. Uh, he, 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 he's the, the boss of me and being. I'm with him six years, but we have four vans on the road. But every cafe we have, every pub, um, all, all the restaurants, all closed. So look, we're, we're out of business right now. But look, uh, we, we can only do what we were told to do. Uh, we, we're, we're, we're on the emergency social welfare since last week, which is which is actually a great help for us. Uh, when that kicks in the next week or two, it, it, it hopefully it'll maintain businesses around. I know even self-employed lads can avail of this as well, which is brilliant, you know. So if you're hoping uh, things are slightly on pause and when it kicks back in again in a few weeks, there might be too many businesses that will go. And if people can survive, business-wise, that's all you can do. Uh, try and put everything on pause. Try and stop it. Avail of the things you can if you have to. Uh, take a break on a mortgage, take a break on rates or whatever, and try and kick back in in a few weeks. But look, we, we never had this before, Shane. We don't know what it's like, you know, but for us, we know work. Uh, mm. There's obviously 99.5% of work is, is, is gone uh, for now. But so look, hopefully kick back in whenever this ends. Uh, but look, what, what can we do, really? What can we do? Uh, and just get on with it. There's no point in, in dwelling on it too much. Uh, the wife works in the bank, so she's on the front line, so she's there. Uh, at least we've that, at least that's still going and that will, will carry on, you know. So, uh, look, there's other people in a lot worse positions than we are. Mm. But as I said, I work for Owen. Uh, Owen has probably the trying to deal with, with us being out of work and, and, and himself and trying to say how will he cope with this when, when, it, when it kicks back in again. But uh, what the government ha have been doing and have done uh, will help everyone, I think, you know. Mm. Uh, and then just from your own point, pers uh, point of view personally, is there any f like extra risk with you considering that you had that heart operation a few years back? I tell you, there's so many things wrong with me, Shane. Uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, sarcoidosis as well, going back since 2010, it kind of, I wouldn't say finished, but uh, it was, it's a long thing. That, that's that's cleared up, I think, right? I was checking up this on online uh, last week. Uh, and the, the heart thing was okay, I think. Um, I did the Irish Heart Foundation, the website there, I think last Friday. I think I was having a beer or two, so I better check this just in case. Um, and the valve I have, I don't think there's any problems with it. Uh, I'm six year, actually six years over that next month, and um, we start flying. Um, but I'm on no medication for that, you know. So uh, uh, thankfully, I don't, I don't think uh, there's any underlying problems with it, you know. You just look like anything. You just have to be careful. If the kids look, you deal with yourself. Uh, but we're just trying to be so cautious. Everyone is, I think, the last uh, week or so of uh, making sure that they, 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 we stay away from people and just do our own thing. 
and, and just looked as enough was in this house to keep us going anyway, you know. Mm, absolutely. If we just, uh, I suppose, move away from COVID-19 because it's dominating everything for the moment. <laughs> just trying to think, um, like, with yourself, what's, what's your current involvement in hurling? Because, you know, we see you on the Sunday game as you've been and, you know, you were manager of Mount Zion and then even before that you were selected at Watford when Michael Ryan was in charge. So what's your current involvement? Uh, nothing, nothing to be honest with you, Shane. Um, I felt this year I, I needed to probably uh, take a bit of a step back. Though I was so busy the last couple of years. Uh, I suppose we have two older kids and two younger kids. You know, uh, the younger lads are four and, and nearly two. So uh, the wife teaches her dancing as well in, in the night time, and I, she's gone uh, three nights a week as well. And when you're working full time, it's hard going. I feel like it's non-stop rushing. You know, um, and it's hard to enjoy when you're rushing. I like setting up. Uh, even train a team to set up training and, and be there on beforehand and take our time at it. I felt the last year or two was very rushed. I was involved with young lads up in the club there for the last couple of years, under 15s and 14s, which was very enjoyable. But uh, I took a year out this year, uh, but look, I suppose we're all in a year out now uh, for the time being. And maybe in the summer, uh, when all this thing uh, hopefully uh, finishes up and we get back to the normality, I, I might be able to have enough of a break that I might kick back in again and start gloving. Because I love it, I do love it, but. Uh, I found myself rushing non-stop and oh jeez it's tough going it's tough going you know I said she she get, gave me all that time when I was hurling at dawn to go off and hurling but when she's dancing as well after work I have to give him a bit of, a bit of time as well and I'm minding the young lad when he's next year I'll bring him up with me he'd be grand you know he's not going to hear that dance and keep away from that now for a couple of years <laughs> would you do a bit of dancing yourself surely surely she's tempted you down to the dance floor a few bottles I, I dance I, 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 the Russian dance I was quitting at the Russian dance I think I ruined my knees the father said he blames that and ruined my knees the vodka like dancing so that's a few bottles but no I'm my face is okay it's just three girls on it uh, they go off the fish in the winter not, not religiously but uh, they would go off the 12 year olds who does it now and the 4 year olds is only half starting it but uh Dancing is a mad, it's a mad thing. They go off for a full day and they're gone for, geez, then we come home on 12 o'clock at night on Sunday, you know. So, uh, myself and myself do our own thing. We might go off around the club and see how we get on and give them a holiday next, uh, next few months, the weather will getting better, you know. <laughs> Did you, like when I was thinking back on that um, that time you had involved with Michael Ryan, and if I remember correctly, was that last game that won in Thurles against Cork when it didn't quite work yeah, out? For you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah we, we lost by a goal. I think it was one sixteen to one nineteen. I think uh, we were three points up with five minutes to go. Uh, we, we were hurling well. We were comfortable enough, and we missed the point to go four up. I think uh, Owen missed the point to put us four up, um, and probably would have would have seen out out, out that game. Uh, and then I think we didn't score for the last uh, six minutes. I think Cork got six points on the trot. And I remember Sean Oma had been a lovely score. Uh, they, they really just kind of bombarded us the last six, seven minutes. And we, we had a chance to get a goal in the last probably puck of the game. They could get, get a draw in, but I think we probably would have it. Uh, and, we, and we didn't. And we, we bowed out. Um, yeah, it's tough. Look, it was, I just done one year with it. And I, I came in, I think, around March, I think it was. Uh, uh, there was a, Things weren't going too well, and the players asked me would I, would I come in around and uh, kind of start doing a bit of training and stuff. And I, I, I basically trained the team really that year. I loved it. Uh, we put up a very respectable performance against Tip that year in the Munster final. Tip were after hammering the team in 2011 by I think 21 points. So uh, in that game as well, we were two points up at half time. But I don't know whether it was confidence or belief, or I, I don't know. But we kind of faded a bit in the second half of that game as well, and, and the same against Cork in the quarter final. It's uh, but I felt at the time, um, maybe a month or two after that, thinking back about it, I was probably too close to one or two of the players. I was really playing with a lot of them as well when we finished up in 2010. So I, I, I just felt it was the right thing maybe to step away uh, because I, and, and go back at it another time. But obviously it, it didn't come up after that. And I didn't push it either. But uh, I just felt probably it was it's awkward enough when you play with players for a long time when you're trying to make decisions on. I remember we didn't start Tony against Clare. And uh, first round of the championship, I found that very hard, very hard. And look, what sure he did as well. He told me, but uh, when you're when you're when you're friends, best friends with a fella, uh, and that happens, I didn't really enjoy that side of it, you know, which is which is tough going. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, have, have you ever had thoughts of going back again? Like, what's, would you have ambition? Obviously, Liam Cahill is there at the moment. And funnily enough, I noticed that you made your debut for Warford the same day he made his debut for Tipperary in 1996. That chapter's yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. It was a lifetime ago now, Shane, and different hurling, I suppose. Uh, I remember he was a great young, uh, great underage player. He probably would have been the players he kind of looked up to. Uh, 
he'd a great reputation himself, Johnny Enroy and these lads and Tip. They were after beating uh, Tip in two minor, or they're almost a semi finals, and uh, 94 and 95. So we, we enjoyed always playing against him even back then, but he had a great reputation. Uh, I think he got an All Star in 96, would I be right? I think mm. he did. Uh, now I played one game that year where, where, where I was gone, uh, I think Tip had his way goal. But I remember he, he, he was a tough, tough player. Uh, he was willing to handle himself back then even, and he was very skillful. And Declan Ryan was full forward and set him up for a lot of scores as well, and they actually worked brilliantly together that year. But uh, no, look, at me, uh, I think the game has moved on again, Shane, even since 2012. Uh, uh, obviously the preparation, uh, just the, the whole professional side of things. I don't know, I don't, I don't at the moment, I wouldn't have any real uh, bra for it. Uh, I don't know, I think my, my time and my kind of impact for Waterford's probably playing, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a, as a as a future manager. It's not even in, in, in beyond the rise at this stage, you know, so I wouldn't even think about it really, to be honest. Mm. And did you enjoy managing Mount Zion there the past couple of years? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, what years were they? Uh, 2015, 2016. Yeah, look, it has its, it has its club hold you know, itself, as, as you know, it has its problems and it has its... Uh, it has its issues and you're, you're dealing with our county players throughout the summer, you're dealing with lads going on for three wounds and when they can play, when the next championship match is on, you're trying to play challenge games where you know you can compete against because you play the better teams. Without full teams, you're getting beaten and you're losing confidence. And uh, But look, that, then a couple of years we've we played some good hurling. Uh, we, Bally Gunnar Bennett's knocked us out in the championship twice, in all fairness, to a better team, Dennis. Uh, the first year, 2015, I think we had 20 wides against them. Uh, it was definitely a killer. Uh, we bombarded them with really scoring uh, and 20 wides and they went on and, and we know what well, they've done in Waterford they've, they've played every team since really uh, but they've knocked us out of the championships uh, a quarter final and semi final so look to be honest we, we know we can play um, 2016 we played some good hard but Dennis Allen and the replay uh, and Valley Gone and Edison again but overall I enjoyed it but uh, the same thing again uh, two years I think was enough and, and give the chance to somebody else and, and that, look I, I love the club I'll always be involved in the club and back in the race I really enjoyed that as well but I, I wouldn't say no to the club senior team again but right now it, it's get back to a bit of underage up there and trying to trying to help out and, and, and trying to kind of like develop one or two players develop certain skills up to a certain players so some good young lads coming through but we're fighting against uh, a huge animal out in Ballygon the whole time that we're trying to Trying to catch up, but we'd eventually win, I think, at some stage, you know? No. Because I was going to ask you about that rivalry you had with Bally Gunner. There was something like, while you were playing, I'm not exactly sure when you finished up playing with the club, but six or seven county finals against them. Like, from what I, I've heard from people down in Waterford, there was skin and hair flying in those games. Like, you were, <laughs> there was proper bad blood. Yeah, we've, uh, geez, thanks to God, there's no YouTube back then. <laughs> <laughs> I could be sitting in the same here talking to you, but no, uh, I know they were, they were great games. There were massive crowds. Like county finals, we ten thousand a county final back then. You know, uh, I think my first county final we got married off. Uh, by the up in my first county final that we won in '98. Uh, I won five more in the all against Valley Gunner. Uh, so we had a great record against them back then, and they were a top class team. Uh, Flinner, Hartley, Stephen Frampton, Billy O'Sullivan, Andy Maloney. Like you were playing against top quality team. Who tells the one was our final as well? You know, but uh, the, the games are brilliant. There was there was uh, there were tough games, skin and hair flying, but never it never went beyond that match. Uh, players did have a lot of respect for each other, uh, a lot of respect for each other off the pitch as well, uh, and never went beyond uh, that match, which it, I, I can honestly say it didn't. Uh, when I was wrong, even on county team starting off, the likes of Frampton, uh, Hardy would pick you up for training, and I was obviously what I'm driving. I was 17, 18, and pick myself and drive up and bring us up to train. And there's huge respect for. Uh, that Ballygunner team from uh, the team I played on, uh, and in all fairness, as they were skinned, there was there was tough games, very tough games, but uh, they were great to be involved in. Like you know, ten thousand feet like county final, we we wouldn't get that in, in three years now down here, you know. Mm. And like if if you go back to the team that you first arrived in in nineteen ninety six, even like growing up as a young lad, there probably wasn't that much to look up to in terms of like. Watford weren't winning much at senior level and hadn't won in all Ireland since 63. Did you come in thinking, I can make an impact or my team can make an impact at senior level? Yeah, look, uh, yeah, it's hard. Underage, we were competitive enough. I played in three monster finals, right, uh, in a row, uh, three minor monster finals. Now, we didn't really, we didn't look like winning any, any of them. We got well bet against Cork, of course, or Joe Dean and uh, 
I think they'd have been the Ireland, I think they won the Ireland in 94. Maybe Galway could have been in 95, Cork made us again. I think it was Sean Oog and these lads were up to the age. Uh, they won the Ireland, I think, that year in 95. 96, Tip made us. I think they won the Ireland as well. And Eugene O'Neill, uh, who else? Uh, Bonnie Kennedy, these lads. But we, we, we were competitive. We, we bet some good teams to get to that, you know. So you always felt, look, we might be able to compete with the 92 team as well that were after the Ireland. I know this was about four or five years later. Uh, you felt we could get our act together. But all we were kind of doing really was looking at, from the outside, looking at the hurling going on. We never felt we were going to I didn't really at the time. I, I didn't think we were going to be as good as like the Limerick and Wexford at the time. It was just getting a sponsor the championship, obviously, back then. The, the games were massive. We only wanted to get on that, if you know what I mean, Shane, and really kind of get into that and, and try to become a team that teams might say, geez, they're not a bad team, they could be hard to beat, and try to kind of work away from that. Which what we, And that's what we do in all fairness. Uh, it, took, it was three years, 98. We really kind of came in on the... Uh, that top tier of, of teams and for us that was huge just to get a bit of respect and then try to go at uh, Monster Championships all Ireland so I came in first to go as we won the game and that's the truth if we would win Monster Championship game back then we were playing for the summer and then it was probably to get to Monster final and then it was to win a Monster final and then ending after that was to win an Ireland semi-final then a final where if my first part of the years that Monster final was a success if you know what I mean my last probably two months of championships weren't a success. We wanted more and more. So the team did go. Uh, and, and it grew like 98, maybe 2002. We threw away two or three games. Uh, and that, if we had to get over them, anything could have happened as well. But it took probably four years something Justin came in in 2002 to win the first month of championship. So at times during that five or six years, you'd be saying, Jesus, what are we doing? Are we going back? Are we ever going to go forward? Thanks for in 2002 then, you know. When you think of 1998, um, do you think of that Clare game and, you know, obviously all the skin and hair flying at the end there, or do you think of the fact that you got to Crow Park as a senior player, the, the t- first time the team got there since 63, and, like, is that a year that you should have done more and probably fast-forwarded your progress, or do you think of it, do you think back of it fondly? Yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I would think that fondly. Uh, personally, personally uh, the uh, most of the finals only went, went okay for me. I was not Sean, yeah, 20, man, 20 years of age, raw, and raw enough. I think I two, like before, like back then, obviously, 96, 97, you played one game, you were gone, knockout championship. So it was hard to develop. Uh, and you developed fairly fast in 98, and you bet Kerry the first game, bet Tip up in Cork, it was a massive game for something, Parky Heave. And then Mark and Sean got in two games. Now, Sean, he wasn't brilliant that day, but I, I, I wasn't good either. So personally, I was always hard on myself saying I could have done better in them two games. Uh, but looking back, Mark was one of the best players to play the game, who was experienced, who had Ireland's in the pocket, three or four Muslim Muslims in his pocket back then. So I was probably too hard on myself over that summer. I had a good game against Galway up, up in Crow Park, or first time up, I got, I think, three points on Patrick Kelly, who was a good wing back, and, and, and I played well enough. In the Ireland semi final, I was, I was okay, I wasn't poor, I was average, I had about four or five bad voids. And, and it definitely, looking back for me, it's, I'd be saying, Jesus, if I only had a bit more composure. Uh, on them few balls that I got in the semi-final um, like the team played okay that day we tried very hard it wasn't a great game I think 1-11 to 1-10 it was a real local derby sticky against Kilkenny but if I, if I, I always felt if I was 23 or 24 I wouldn't have made the mistakes I made in, in that semi-final I got a lot of ball but missed very bad boys that are rush shots and took the wrong option once or twice you know and definitely, it's definitely one that got away Definitely. Well, when do you think you played your best hurling? Like you were, you were captain in two thousand four, one monster that year. Were you at your peak around then? Uh, I think yeah. I think oh two to seven were my best years. Yeah, uh, definitely oh oh two to seven. And and yet when I look back on it, uh, ninety nine, two thousand two thousand one. Uh, without sounding big headed or whatever, else, I'm not like that. I was flying. I was absolutely flying, flying in, in nearly every league game. In the few championship games he played, I, I think I nominated for three All Stars in them three years, and I played one game. Uh, so I was absolutely flying as a forward, but uh, just so unlucky the way the championship panned out. Uh, Cork Bettis in '99, uh, Tiff in 2000, uh, Limerick in 2001, 11 points up. So them years were kind of, but I got confidence from it. Personally, got confidence from it, and and that uh, fed in 2002 and. 
2002 look was a great year. Um, we, we played some great hurling when our first month of championship. 2003 was a bit of a, and it happened lots of times, one good year, one mediocre year maybe. We threw in what's the final against Cork, and that day again, I think I had seven wides, you know, I had seven points and played the year before and seven wides that day. That's another day you look back and you go, Jesus, why want I just a bit more composed on the ball and just take me time having a shot or whatever, you know. And But I could, I could have been hard on myself back then, Shane, if at times when I was a bit younger, if I wasn't getting a man of the match, I could be hard on myself, which is looking back here, it was crazy, crazy, you know, but look, hindsight is a, is a great thing, isn't it? Well, uh, you, t- you talk about, like, going from, like, you, you've played midfield, you played, like, you know, centre forward, scoring seven points, you were centre back, of course, for a number of years. And I often think about, you know, us and Gleeson, in your own club, man, the fact that he, he has been wing forward, he's been midfield, centre back, wing back, whatever. Did you find it easy to transition from one position to another? Because it, I'm not sure, if, maybe it's a different game now and it's tougher to do it. Yeah, I did, I did. Uh, to be honest, I think you'd really find it really easier now, would you? If I was centre back now, I'd probably get five points and play again. <laughs> no one mark of you. Yeah, but the, the lads give me a pass, it's just a love it. But uh, no, um, 2003, uh, uh, I ended up, uh, I, I was. I was after most of the final thousand three. I was I, I was sick with myself. I was crossing myself, you know. And uh, I, I trained very hard for three or four weeks. And I think I got six points to play against Wexford up in Northern Park. They bet us. Uh, Wexford are a decent team. They drew a cork the same day a year in the Iron semi final, and that actually gave me confidence to, to win two thousand four. Um, and two thousand four, I kind of knew from talking with Justin, he was putting back centre back, which was a place I always loved playing. When I was young growing up. If if we ever got a man sent off with a club or we were down a man, it always it always put me back centre back if we were if we were down a man and trying to sweep. But I loved it, always enjoyed it. And he put me back there in the league in two thousand and four, uh, and I loved it. A new lease of life. Uh, I felt like I could really just cement this down and really enjoy it. And I said that like over a course of maybe two or three years, I was centre forward for it was eight, seven or eight years. Uh, it was a lovely change to get. Uh, and I'm still only 20, I think I was what, 26, uh, 25, 26, so I was still, I, I, was, I, was, I was fit, I, I was just in my prime, and I definitely had my best four or five years, definitely back centre back, definitely, and I loved it, loved it. Uh, like, think back, people would think I was a centre back, and I spent mo- a lot, most of my career as a forward. So them four or five years definitely I made the probably biggest impact I, I felt, you know. Would you, would you have gotten more enjoyment out of a, a brilliant catch or out of getting a score? Uh, bring a catch then get the score <laughs> no uh, yeah I, I'd really get more enjoyment out of doing something yeah probably get, doing a catch to me like under pressure I, I love that type of stuff you know like as we thought about Dawn I'm watching something there uh, oh yeah I was trying to be about the dancing I was saying look you have to get to constantly do it do it do it so they don't even think about it where I was catching the ball in that time, so much, so much in training, you catch it, you're thinking about it. And the end of the career, I thought about it, if you know. And I, I didn't, I would, I would love doing something uh, with pressure, whether it be a catch, getting away from a fella, get a score, getting an easy hand pass over the bar. To me, that was just your job, if you know what I'm saying. But to win a ball on a fella, go around and put it over, that was what I loved doing, if, if, if that makes sense, you know. Uh, like, if I got a hand pass and I was free, I felt I have to, I should put it over. I wouldn't even, do you know what I mean, Shane? And I'd go, just run back and where to grab a ball, I'd go around and maybe even hand pass or go for a score yourself. To me, that was what I loved him. And that's what I, I wanted to try and do. I wanted to pressure, I wanted to try and catch it with something behind me, you know? Because, like, I'm there thinking of that catch in Turnus against Cork. Was it the rocket gone up centre forward on you? Yeah, yeah. Thinking of the one in Crow Park where you caught it out from uh, under the crossbar. The, you had so many games, I can't remember which year was which. I'm sure plenty yeah, of viewers yeah. know. But, like, is there one of those that you kind of refer to mostly in your head or that people bring up with you mostly? Yeah, probably look, the monster 504, everyone says it. But uh, it was probably the most important catch, but it was nowhere near. So your best catch, say, right? Because uh, the rock was probably positioned wrong and he went with one hand, uh, which he never go with one hand. I was surprised. Uh, but look, it was probably the last, obviously the last puck of the game in it. So it was, a, it was a very important catch and it was it was a huge moment in that, probably seeing out that game. The game was over after that then. It was the last puck of the game for Finn or the free. Uh, and probably had the most, but 
as you said, catch against Cork going facing the wrong way and coming up. And that was my own fault. So I actually ran under the ball too much. But uh, them kind of things, you kind of go, that was a good catch. But I, I didn't really think too much about it because it, I felt I should have been doing it. Do you know, uh, like, you should have been catching that. Like, I said, my last couple of years, maybe from 08 on, I thought about really everything I was doing. And I'd miss simple catches where for seven, eight, nine, ten years, I'd be catching without even thinking about it. And, um, to me, centre back back then, there was so much under the dropping ball. It, it was a lot of uh, one on ones, obviously, back then it was. You had to try and be strong physically and catch it, you know. So, um, yeah, look, it was part of your job. Uh, Brick came in then to the back and done it for years as well so uh, as I said it was a different game now it's obviously the ball's in front of you the sweep and roll that I used to play a lot uh, you could be behind the ball too too far now you might not even get to that first the first uh, pop pass you know so look but look as I said you probably would have developed your game over time as well then you know did, did you find that as you got towards the latter end of your career and like in 2010, that was your last season. Davy Fitz left you on the bench um, against Tipperary in the semi final. You came on in the forwards and scored three points. But before I ask you about that, did you find that your powers sort of waned as the year went on? Like you were probably around 32 then, or so? Yeah, no, big time, big time. Look, I'll be honest, uh, after 08, I learned fine. I said that lo- loads of times uh, over the years uh, on different teams and in the book and everything. Uh, I was never the same after that, uh, I suppose. When you're waiting your whole career to get to such a big game uh, and you feel like right, finally we're in this thing that we waited your whole career for it and it flopped and it went so badly for me and for the whole team, I found it hard to grow over that. I did. Um, I picked up injuries then. My knees were starting to kind of crumble on me. Uh, two operations in 09, uh, missed the whole summer in 09, came back in 10, uh, struggled, um, couldn't really... Couldn't get up to physical standards. I couldn't really put on weight to, to be the player I was. I, I wasn't as strong. I wasn't as confident. Uh, I know definitely big time. It was, it was there, there are a couple of years I wouldn't be uh, looking back too fondly. Uh, and look, looking back on it at the time, I would have having having an out with Davy over the time and having an out with Paul and Fan in my own club, man. Uh, but. Uh, they, they probably weren't wrong really by not starting me, you know. But did you feel that, well, at least I've gone out in a hide, like the team has lost, and obviously that's the most important thing, but for you, you're at least like, I put an exclamation point on it by coming on and scoring three points. No, definitely, definitely. I remember getting, um, yeah, we uh, got the most of the final draw against Cork, and I came on in the, in the first game against Cork, I thought I'd done okay, you know, midfield, and um, love playing against Cork, love Monster Finals, we know you're playing Monster Finals, you're confident playing in them. And I remember saying the day before the game, Throw me on if there's any bar, I, I'm ready now. I couldn't wait for it. It was like you know, that pitch, like so confident where you were for a monster final. And you got one minute in the replay, and um, Dan got the goal. It came on the last minute of extra time. Uh, tough, tough going watching the boy that day, night, you know. And then I trained very hard for four weeks up to the Ireland semi final. I was the, it was the best I played probably in a couple of years in, in training and in house games. Uh, I thought I was very close to starting that game. Uh, all the, everyone thought the same. Uh, but I, I came on looking, I thought I played well enough, I got I think two points in play, I got a point from free over the bar, I went for a couple of more goals and I probably could have tapped them over. But no, I, I felt I, I, I put a few goals to bed that day, uh, especially in the Iron Final. It was my first game uh, back there from the Iron Final and to kind of feel comfortable again out in Pro Park because I, I, I thought in the Iron Final for, 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 for years, uh, Shane, and I thought, why did that go so long? Why wasn't I okay that day? Why, why, why didn't I deal with uh, the Ireland final which I felt I should have been able to we played so many big games so many sellouts over the years and, and, and I was thinking that to be out in Pro Park and, and be able to hurl a game when they were thinking about it was, was great even though we lost and, and look you're sick you lost the Ireland semi-final again but personally you're kind of going right I was able to deal with that and I, and I, and I done it again. Because you know? like, I wasn't even thinking that much about the bringing up the Kilkenny game before we chatted. What, what do you think went wrong? Like You're talking about yourself personally. Do you feel the occasion got to you or was there any of that? No, I, no, I, I'll be honest. I remember what on the parade uh, before the game saying, can't wait for this. Simply can't wait for it. Uh, this is what, you're, this is what you're, 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 you live for, really. We lived the whole, our whole kind of career for that, especially from... Uh, as you said, 98, but 2 one when we felt that we had a chance every single year of getting to it and winning it. Uh, and look, it, it happened so many teams in finals over the years in every sport. 
in every sport. And, and sometimes when a sport, when a final goes wrong, it, it, it doesn't just uh, go slightly wrong, it went horrendously wrong. And I think when we were so far behind, uh, the heads went. And, and, and there's no point in saying it, it didn't go on. We never played as bad before, and I don't think we'd ever play as bad again. But it went so wrong, and you, you feel really, how did this happen? And you, we should, probably should have taken stock of it and said, right, just see out this game and get it back to even 9, 10 points. But we didn't. We just probably were so gutted this was happening. And it's happening live, if you know what I mean. It's happening when the game is on. So, but, look, it, it was one of the things. You, you came up against the, the best team of all time as well, in all fairness, you know. But, uh, but look, we, we came back strongly after that 2009 and we bet, got bet by four points in our semi-final. Uh, the team did bounce back, but for me personally, I probably didn't really, you know. Really? You'd go as far as saying that, like, did you feel... Like, how would you even sum up that? That uh, like, when did you know that you hadn't bounced back from that? Uh, when did I know? I, I suppose probably, uh, maybe go even straight away after. I, you're always you really feel, you feel really. How do you after a fine, right? You feel you feel embarrassed. You feel you're obviously depressed, but you feel embarrassed. You feel you, you, you you're really ashamed of yourself. Do you know? And then you're saying, how did we do that? And what? how did that go wrong? And how did I miss it free when I'm playing 15 years of off? Or, do you know what I mean? I, I probably thought, I thought so much about it. Uh, it probably built it up even nearly too much in my head. Instead of saying, right, now I was 30 years of age. I was at having a good few operations on my knees. I knew myself I wasn't uh, the same player that I was for, for 10 years before that. But I probably didn't build it up too much. Uh, what I needed was a good 2009, which I didn't have because I got injured a week before I played Limerick. I played a Limerick game. Uh, I was joined captain Steve Manoffi. I trained very hard for that winter. I said, look, I'm going to give it one, definitely another go. I got injured week before. Uh, I played against something Taurus. I shouldn't have played. I couldn't move. I got taken off the first ever time in a championship match. Got operations the next day. And I remember lying in Whitfield that Monday saying, ah, what am I doing, you know? Uh, and I suppose that all rolled in as well then, you know? If I had uh, moving on and kicking on in the good 2009, it would, have been, it would have been gone, you know? But it didn't. And that carried on because I missed that whole summer. Then a roll in 2010, wasn't getting the game. Uh, came on for a mi- five minutes against Clare, 10 minutes against Cork. So th- it all rolled and rolled and rolled, you know. Uh, but that 2010 semi final banished a lot of it because I felt, look, it was only one game. If I had to get the three or four iron finals of playing like that, I would say, look, there's something wrong, if, if that makes sense, you know. But to get the one, didn't go right, put my hands up, it didn't go right for any of us or me. What can you do, really? And I, I, the older I got and the more I thought about it, I would I would feel a lot more like that, you know, because every other game, whether it be a monster final, if it didn't play well, I'd play well the next one. League final, play well the next one. Do you know what I mean? But I never got a chance to get back to that way to try and redeem it. And that's the only only way where you kind of feel that, you know. Because uh, like um, I would have this thought that 2007 was your very peak. I remember working in the Sunday Tribune that summer, and we had a headline about bringing sexy back. That was a song from Justin Timberlake at the time. That was the way you were playing hurling the whole lot. But like you won the league final, beat Kilkenny that year. You're unbelievable in Munster. Dan scored something like eleven goals that summer. Something ridiculous. Got hurt of the year. Uh, if that replay against Cork didn't happen, and like every time I bring this up with a Watford person, they don't want to disrespect the Limerick team that they played in that semi final. And like we don't. But like the reality is, you were a better team than them. And the replay kind of against Cork caught you. Maybe you ran out of gas. I really felt that that was the year above all where you could have won it. Yeah, I think so. I think definitely 07. I think that was when uh, we got we got so physically fit. We were, we were probably five years with Jerry Fitz, who was a physical trainer. We were, as you bet, Kilkenny in the league final. We'd done a week's training camp over in Villamore in Portugal. We were training like professionals. We were we were acting like professionals, see. But, and enjoying it as well, because that team always enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, we enjoyed it after every game. Uh, but we, we, were at, we were in our prime, I think, you know. Uh, personally, uh, as Howard, even as I said, the, the conversation just before that, that I felt in 2008, I was nearly finished. In 2007, I, I felt I had 10 years left. <laughs> and probably my best year, uh, I played my best horn, I'd say that. You're going to also send her back. And, uh, but yeah, look, we we drew with Cork the first day, uh, the second day. Uh, we played very well against Cork. And, and it was a great, two great games. Uh, we were at comfortable enough winners, four points. I think we won in the second game. and I think we trained too hard the week after the Cork game. No, no need. Uh, I've said it before. Uh, we're probably on too much of a high. Uh, 
too probably too confident and Limerick waiting we're waiting for us that Sunday. And look, I know this is to Limerick, uh, they fully deserved that day, but we, we were a better team than it, but that day we weren't. They they tore into us. Uh, they showed us uh, no respect on the pitch, which was our right to do. Uh, and when you have likes of Ollie Moore, uh, a brilliant server, a brilliant player, uh, Andrew Shaughnessy, uh, Dwayne Ryan got two something that day. Uh, Mike O'Brien, these lads, Mark Foley, they didn't really care about us. Uh, they saw that chance and they took it. They took it in all fairness. And that day, uh, you know, we got it back twice to a point. We made a couple of mistakes, but that day they, they deserved to win it. But I think in the overall scheme of things, we were a better team. But not that day, you know. You had four managers um, when you were in with Waterford. So Gerald McCarthy, Justin McCarthy, uh, Michael. Oh no, so Michael Ryan was probably gone. Yeah, because Davy Fitz. So you had three managers. Who do you no, think? Uh, that, no, uh, and Tony Mansfield, the first year. Tony Mansfield. Yeah. Who, who do you yeah. think got the most out of you? I suppose it's just one year with Tony Mansfield, so maybe it's probably hard to get the most out of you in the space yeah, of one year. Yeah, yeah. He was good. Like he was like old school. Look, ninety six. I was back training. In my first year, I was like the league was at start in ninety five. Like you know. So look, Jesus, <laughs> it's a lifetime ago now. Uh, Ger- Gerald came in, uh, and we didn't know what to expect. Uh, we obviously knew about him. Uh, he came in. He was brilliant. Uh, Gerald McCarthy got us to a level. To compete with the top teams, uh, as I said early on, uh, got us from. Are we any, ever going to get up to these lads to be able to compete with them? I thought we left Gerald down. There was games we definitely uh, threw away and made wrong decisions in him uh, from '97. '97 he got us to eleven, and then I gave we kicked on, and he held us for maybe up to 2001. We were eleven points against Limerick up in up in Parky Keeve and threw away like crazy, absolutely crazy. You know, and that's not Gerald's fault. That's the players' fault. You know, but he got us to a level. That we definitely could compete. And Justin came in with different ideas, uh, a lot of hurling, all hurling. And starting off, we were like, Jesus, what's this? What are we going to do here? This is like, but the way it was mad, he, he only got us ready for the summer. He didn't care about the league. Uh, and he honestly didn't, uh, starting off for the first few years. But he was uh, he got us right for them summers. And the hurling we played uh, under him, and it was definitely my best hurling. And he got the most out of me, uh, Justin did, yeah, definitely. Uh, I said, looking back, uh, they're my most enjoyable years. Uh, the, the team was was really, really in its prime for them, five or six years. Uh, but it, it came to an end as well. Like all, like all relationships, you know, that did come to an end. And it came to an end over the course of the year, really, uh, from the end of 07 up to the clear game in 08, you know. Uh, and then Davy came in. And look, Davy, Davy got that team. A lot of us were kind of in the twilight of our career. Uh, and got us in our final off in all fairness that in 2008. 2008 summer was great. I really enjoyed a different training, uh, a different kind of uh, level of intensity again because there's only probably just a new man talk and new ideas. Uh, but I, Davey got a lot of lads got a lot of stuff out of Davey. My, I was finished really, you know, and I said over injuries and, and it's not being the same player. So I, I, I never, Davey never got the, say, the, the right version of me, if you know what I'm saying, you know. Do you, like, do you think that Justin McCarthy's style, you know, like, because he was a little bit older at that stage, and of course what happened with Limerick where he got kind of heaved out there, you know, players left and he, he booted a few players out. Like, when Davy took over, you never played the same sort of swashbuckling hurling again. Like, the brilliant stuff that we watched in the years beforehand all came under Justin McCarthy, yet you got to an All-Ireland final under Davy, won another Munster then in 2010. Does, yeah, is yeah. history reflecting well on Justin McCarthy? Uh, is he considered like he was a bit of a dinosaur towards the end? Or how would you look at it? No, I look uh, to me uh, like he, he's, he's usually respected and usually remember him more for it because it's, it's the way, as you say, look, that team beat him getting an iron final and people still talk about that team 0 2 to 7. Like some of the games they played, we played them were unbelievable. Like, Looking back on even, uh, say, there people on Twitter there last week or two, there's different games, come on, more for card games, you can watch them now, they'd stand over at games you'd see now, with all the advances in, in training, with technique, and in the modern, say, the science of the game, they, the games back from them for years were unbelievable. Um, but look, the game obviously is different now, but Justin did, the hurling he brought to us was, was incredible. Like Some of the scores, I, I'd love to watch some of the games back and see, what were, were they as good as, as I think? Or is it only just the high or only chases them that they were? But like, I think them, I, I think the games were good. I, I know the team was very good. Some of the hurling we played was unbelievable. Uh, but I think definitely, uh, look, he's like, look, 
players, players made the decision, right? Um, in 08. And looking back, even when I finished down there, when I finished up, well, I finished 10 years. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't think I would I do it again, you know, because it's a horrible way for a manager who gave some, some load to us to, 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 to finish up that way, you know, because he was after bringing us up the Iron semi finals, three Munster championships, a league, you know. Uh, now, I said it before and I'll say it again the county board should have made that decision in 07 uh, because it was after coming to an eventual end, you know, but it ended up coming to us, and in all fairness, look. We made a decision which was unbelievably hard. Now, obviously, it was crazy, very crazy hard on Justin, but we made that decision, you know, which is we'll all have to live with. And, and is it a case, like, do you come away from these relationships with, you know, the likes of Justin, it ended badly? I guess there was some bit of acrimony between yourself and Davey because you weren't starting at the time. And even if you know now that you weren't at your best, at the time you probably still felt you should be starting. Do you come away from it? Do you make up later on? Is there still a bit, a bit of an, an air between you or how does it go? Jeez, I saw a few things in Davey's book now, so I don't... <laughs> I know, look, uh, look, that's horrible. That's... Look, Justin... Obviously, Justin was hurt with all of us. Obviously, he felt let down. Uh, and I don't blame him. Uh, I don't blame him. Uh, how could you How could you have probably time for lads that done that to you, you know? Uh, I, I haven't seen Justin since. Uh, a lot of the players haven't seen Justin since, which is which is very... It's hard, and Dawn is always getting on to me saying, that's wrong, you know? that's It's a bit sad, really, you know? A lot, I know a lot of the players feel the same, that we don't really know... How would you even approach it really at this stage, you know? Uh, which is, it's wrong. It's probably very childish on our side that we we should have just said, not not for, from us, that we should just go up and say, look, uh, these, that's horrible, do you know what I mean? And these things happen. Look at this one. Will you go away with you for a minute? You have to go up to your Come on, stop. Come on, come on, go up to my. What? That's it. You know? <laughs> She's dancing in the door. But, eh. Uh, yeah, Davey, no, look, Davey made decisions, and I, I, I respect, um, I, I've, um, I made decisions as a selector of Walford and as a manager of Mount Sign that, you know, when you end up finishing playing that, you know, you have to do, and they're not nice, and you, you do them at the time in the best interest of the team, but it's, uh, it's not always please everyone, but you have to make them sense if you think you're honestly right. I know at the time Davey did think they were right, you know. Do you, do you have a favourite rivalry over the years? Like, you had some great games against Kenny, Limerick, Cork is obviously the first thing that comes to mind, even Tipperary, but do you have a favourite rivalry? Ah, Cork, yeah, definitely Cork, I suppose. Look, uh, was it 98? They bet us in the league final. Uh, I mark Brian Cork, another top class player. And brilliant, brilliant player, brilliant centre back. I suppose near of great centre backs with Cork, Ron Kieran Carey, uh, McMahon. Um, 98, Cork won the final in 99, and then half, I wouldn't say went, but uh, had a bit of a lull, and then they, they came again, um, we played them in 2002, they got their own final in 2003, they played in 2003, 2004, then games were unbelievable. 2004 was a final, is, uh, to me it's, it's one of the best games played, uh, no, I didn't see it for years, uh, Look, if I look at it now, I, could, I, I don't know, I'd love to see it again and see if it was as fast as it felt as we, as we played it, but look, 55,000 people in Torres, uh, the place was heaving, the, the weather was lovely. It was real old school, lots of championship and all. And uh, the games we had with them, they, you know, to watch every one of them Ben O'Connor, Jerry O'Connor, uh, Joe Dean, the yeah, Eisbach and Noyne McCarthy a good few times, tough as nails, ran everywhere. Uh, Tom Kenny midfield, Gardner, um, Ronald Corno had been like, <laughs> that's an iconic halfback line. Like, that, like you're, you're talking about some of the best players play the game. And, and, we, and we matched them. We bet him a lot, they bet us, but we're unbelievable matches, unbelievable. Is it is a sort of pride to you that, like, forevermore, anyone who's any interest in hurling, they will refer back to those games, and the likes of yourself and the Cork half back line, Milan, Shanahan, Ken, or Tony Brown, that you will always be mentioned. Is that a source of pride? Ah, it is, look, I suppose, and I said, yeah, when I started off playing, and my father played for 15 years and won three months of championship matches, and my father played from 70, sorry, 72 or 70, I think 72 up to 85, 86, and won three games. So that's how the level where water really were, and what we got from my 15 years of other semi finals, monster finals, unbelievable matches, huge crowds. 
I, honestly, Shane, if someone told me that at 14, 15, I would have taken the hand off you. You know, uh, honestly, would because uh, that's what I want to do was play in big matches. Now, when we got into your career, you want, all you want is another medal, right? And it's all you want now was to have one and you would have been happy. But honestly, if someone had told me that back then, I would have said, right, uh, I, I can't wait for these 15 years and bring it on, really, you know, because I said, uh, you play them matches, you're driving at the tour, you're driving at the Crow Park, and the place packed, and knowing that you're in, 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 in with winning, a chance of winning this game was, was brilliant, you know. Who, who would have been the maddest man you would have shared the dressing room with? There's a good few of them there. There's a good few of them. I know, James, we'd some crack. We'd some crack over the years. And, like, that team was very tight, uh, That uh, the, the Justin team, say. Um, we went over different places over the years and the crack we had. And and it, it's still, if we meet any of that team there now, you, you, you'd have a buzz, you'd have a chat straight away. Uh, and there's a lot to be said for that as well. Uh, I said, we're not, we didn't mean all there, but that team, uh, there's a bond there still from that team, you know. Milan, look, Milan was crazy. Uh, I live on the same street as Milan. He, told, he lost his phone. I was ringing his phone yesterday to see if he, he, was, uh, he was out with the kids for a minute out in the, out in the green. And uh, he couldn't find his phone. I was ringing his phone and he couldn't find it. And he was, where's my phone, eh? But he was, look, he was a great crack. And when he, he that rawness when he came on, uh, starting off, was unbelievable. The speed of him, uh, in that corner, he couldn't be marked in corner forward back then. He could not be marked. And he ended up being an unbelievable player for us. He was, look, he, he was a great crack. Uh, and he wasn't mad. And look, some players would say well, we were a bit mad. But we were, we were, we were all a bit crazy. It was great for, obviously, Tony, uh, Owen. We, we, we had so much cracks over, over, over the years. Dan, all the boys, you know. Uh, but I would say Milan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've interviewed him before. He, he's great value. He's great crack. Uh, would he? Who would have been the toughest man to mark in training? Would it have been the likes of? Well, I suppose it depends on whether you were in the forwards or backs. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, when you're a when you're a forward, Tony, Tony was unbelievably tough to mark. He was so fit, so fast. Uh, Tony was so driven in everything he done. Uh, like Tony, he looked after his body so well. We would stop him. Go back years ago at the train, you'd stop at nice summers. Now, we'd be getting nice, we'd be out the red apple. We'd be like, What's this for that? What's wrong with this for that? Red apple. And he looked after himself so much, you know. But he was, if he was given a job, oh, that's it, you know. Uh, and the lads would know at Mount Sign Train, and I'd be at centre forward for the club on my life. And Bart Tony, if we tear lumps out of each other in training to get them going, and they'd know, they'd just leave this off. You know, all because I'd be best friends with Tony, and we'd kill each other, and we'd bring up training to a different level from doing that. But they just leave us off as well because the two of us were liable to do that in the times in, in matches, you know. But uh, he was he, he was unbelievably tough. Uh, Fergal Hart, he marked Fergal for years as well. Uh, brilliant, brilliant player, brilliant reader of the game. Uh, unread in the air as well. Um, he put the hand down on top of you and grabbed with the left. He was brilliant to doing that. Something like Tommy Welch used to do for years. But no, he was great, great, great player. And as a forward, I suppose as a back then, I remember when Brick came on the scene starting off, he was centre forward. Uh, Brick was very tough, very fast. Uh, I wouldn't say unreal fast, but was a dog. Was always in your face. Was always there, and was a great athlete um, in getting around the pitch and, and getting on the ball. You know, so he, look, he was a great player to mark, uh, and I said great bats. We 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 would always drive each other on to try and improve each other and train and we mark each other uh, because we and Jack Kendy. I know he wouldn't be start too many games, but Jack, we said Jack used to have some fair, fair tussles and. Jack was a fella who used to always kind of get into me in training, and I loved it. And uh, fair play to him, he was a great bit of stuff. He was unlucky, I suppose, at Warford over the years, but he definitely, we we the right few battles with Jack over the years, yeah. And, and who was the, like, the final question about the olden days then? Who was the toughest guy to mark? The toughest in, in against other teams? Yeah, exactly. Or, like, who was the toughest to mark or player on opposition teams that you, you might not necessarily mark, but feared the most? Yeah, jeez, uh, I tell you. Um, when I, I remember as a forward, uh, yeah, when Ollie Moore used to play centre back or the wing back, as a, when he was a back, he was a brilliant player. Brilliant. I remember Mark and Ollie as when I was a centre forward, say, and he was he was an unbelievable athlete as well. Uh, I remember saying, Jesus, how to get a better of him? I remember Mark and Larry O'Gorman when I was young enough, starting off the same again, the kind of confidence in him, the swagger in him that you wouldn't really. He was a brilliant player, leaned on, cut in half. Uh, but I. When I was centre forward, I was young centre forward, and I was marking all these players. Then you get McMahon, see, I'd always uh, put Mac, Sean McMahon, uh, Kieran Carey, Brian Cork, and roughly the same bracket of just the top centre backs, you know. The mark them growing up was unbelievable. Uh, if you came out even 50 50 against them, 
you were after earning your day, you know. Uh, like they were, they were definitely uh, top class. And I suppose as a back, uh, look, I, Martin Comfort, John Hine, that fell it up. You wouldn't hear too much about him on that great the Kenny team. Jeez, he was tough, tough as nails, and a big rangy, rangy. We grab balls out in front of you that you, you can't get your hurry to. You know, and it was awkward. He was like a, he was like a. A rake really, but he all these shoulders and he couldn't get out in front of him to get the ball and I found him very hard. Another mad fit on a few all star trips, some crap with him, all right, but uh, he was uh, very tough. Feel free to tell us any of those mad stories if you like. I mean, I'm always open to a mad story. Ah, no, no, I all right, say shame, but I can't. Like. <laughs> well, I'll just finish up then because you've been very good at your time. Just finish up by asking you, what, uh, what are you kind of, what are you thinking about this current Watford team? Obviously, the season is in spe- uh, suspended indefinitely at the moment. But Liam Cahill's first year, things didn't go well last year and even the year before in Derrick's last year. But are you feeling optimistic at the moment? Yeah, look, it's hard to tell. Uh, I, I'm always the one. I always was the one. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much into the league. Uh, I think the, the modern way of sensationalising every game, every skill in league matches, that seems a bit over the top, you know. And I think you can only judge a player and judge them on championship. And that's the way I always felt as a player. I, I, I use the league obviously seriously, but I use it to get myself right for the summer. Uh, and I think that's what Walford have to do. Tip have done that the last couple of years, got set right for the summer. Now, we got to a league final last year. Um, I know we played it was the end of March, was the Limerick Bets very well up in Crow Park. Things were flying up to that point. And we look what happened in the summer, you know. So I think it's very hard, very early and too hard to tell yet. They look like they're a bit more, um, I suppose, I wouldn't say spirit, because that's, that's probably unfair on Porrick and that. But they're not giving up and, and, and they're fighting out to the bitter end. Uh, at times we look like you're saying how are we going to get up to 11 scores that are going to really compete against likes of Limerick and Tip come the summer but we're seeing the end games at, at the end of all these league games so far we've been in it but I said I think it's too early to tell yet we'll only see really when the ground gets hard and if this game <laughs> if the summer goes ahead but uh, I think you can only judge a player on that uh, look the summer the last couple of summers have been have been terrible uh, not not a victory, and we need to get I suppose the Walker crowd back on side. We need to see performance. Get one win. If 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 the round robin is going ahead, if they have enough time to do it, get one win, and that will give an one of the early two games, and it will lift the team's confidence and even get the crowd behind them again because they have nine thousand in Limerick in Welsh Park at the Limerick's uh, our second championship game last year it was shocking. Uh, we used to have nine, ten, twelve thousand at league games. Uh, you, you, like that's what, the crowd of, of Queen I wouldn't say there's a small there's a core uh, three or four thousand or more for that will always go to the games that have been true followers but we need to get people behind it again by, by getting the victory and, and playing that hurl that we like to watch in, in saying that uh, Liam every one of his teams that he had with Tip uh, always performed for him I remember seeing one interview he done after I think it was a Cork bet him down in Parky Keeve under 21 a couple of years ago and he said that's the first time that team had never showed up for me uh, and, and he was right because I was involved in that team of the year under 21 for, for three or four years and that was def- easily the first time that that group of lads never showed up for him so every one of his teams died for him uh, I think that's what we need you know and there's no nonsense with him Shane uh, he's he just he's just talk. He, he, he's Seeing games as they are, he, he's just talking as he, as he sees the game. There's no nonsense, there's no over-the-top stuff with him. He's just uh, a normal man doing the job. And I think people are seeming to respond to that as well, you know? Because I'd be thinking, if this team hit the ground running and you had Stephen O'Keefe in goals like Conor Prunty's a brilliant player, if Tyke de Borca gets back fit, if Ozzy Gleeson hits his, his peak again, if Jamie Barron gets going, Kevin Moran is still there, I'd love to see what Desi Hutchinson's potential is. Or if Manny, there's probably a few more players than I think of. There's no reason to not compete with the best teams. No, they should. They could easily. Um, they should. Uh, I think it was it four years now. It's a lot of them won the Iron Door 21. So they, they definitely come into their prime. Uh, they're, they're, they have potential. Uh, Callum Nines, after having a great couple of years, great, a great summer last year. Uh, Played well in every championship game. I started the league brilliantly again this year. Kieran Bennett started the league very well, got injured. This will do him no harm, this break. Uh, Austin got injured. Before. This will do him no harm either. So, um, Jamie Barron seems to be kind of rejuvenated. He looks really energised again. It's been the Barron that we know 
getting on every break, moving forward every opportunity, passing the ball, looking for the return ball. Uh, has been brilliant so far in the league, you know. So look, we have we have it. Ty De Bork is a player we need to get back uh, and need to get him back fairly fast and really see him in his peak this summer. And uh, Dara Foyd is another player. We only ever got him free of injury. Uh, he came onto the scene around I don't know what year it was, maybe ten, eleven. If this one had been free of injury, he, he would be one of the best players in the country. You know, it's it's a shame because he has everything. Uh, if we got him back as well and got a run of games, that's a steady core group that, that you can build on. You know, and he's, a, he's just a Desi Hutchison. Uh, he lit up the club championship. Now we all know uh, County Horton and Club Horton are miles apart. You know, uh, but I'm sure. Look, I think he's a top of the ground man. I don't think the league would suit him. Uh, I think he's a top of the ground man, and I, I wouldn't judge Desi at all until you see him in the in the hard ground this summer, you know. You've been very good with your time, so I appreciate you joining me, and uh, best of luck to you you and yours during these very strange times at the moment. Same, same to you, Shane. Same to you. No problem. Thanks.